Have you ever wanted to make something blow up? Today I'm going to show you how to make a sound of blowing something up. So the, the next best thing. <laughs> and what's even better, I'm going to do it all with free and open source software. And on Linux. Check it out. Hey, I'm Anfa. I'm an electronic music producer and sound designer, so I only use open source software and Linux. In this video I'm gonna make some explosion sounds, because that's fun! And we can also learn some interesting things about sound design and producing sound effects. I'm gonna be using Ardor, which is my DAW of choice. Okay, so I like to start making explosions with a synthesizer. So let's open up a synthesizer. Let's go create a MIDI track. What could we use? Vitalium. And let's have maybe four instances, just for good measure. Okay, yes, I want my MIDI keyboard to follow selection and provide music data. Now let me disconnect the MIDI tracks so they don't all play, and just one. Yes. Fantastic. Now, let's open up the plugin and see what we can do. Explosions are violent increases in air pressure, which create a shockwave and a lot of turbulence or chaotic air movement. So let's maybe go with noise. Here's a sampler. We can make the noise stereo in Vitalium by dragging the stereo control over the pitch. This is fine. You can also increase the amount. And now left and right channels are playing at different speeds. You can also start this at random places, so it doesn't matter because we want to make explosions. So we can have one. This way every single hit is going to sound a little bit different. Now this sounds way too bright, so I'm going to open a filter. Make sure that sampler is going into that filter. You see that it also changed here. <laughs> Let's wait with the backup a little bit, okay? Now that's quite quiet, so I'm going to make this louder. And... Play with the resonance. I'm going to up the drive. Also, I am going to uh, give myself a little bit more volume in here. Okay, I think I want to also transpose this noise sample. And maybe even add some random variation. I'm going to grab the random source, put it here. All right, I'm going to speed it up and lower the influence. Let's slow it down. All right, now this sounds a bit like wind and explosions are kind of like a special case of wind. Bullshit. I'm going to alter the envelope one, which is the Amplitude envelope. Okay, that sounds more like what we're going for. Maybe let's remove the attack time so it's perfectly quick. If we zoom in, you can see that the default has a little bit of attack. We can minimize, re remove that completely. Okay, this is like a bit too chill. Let's try a different filter. There's a bunch of types of filters. We're using the analog one, there's also a dirty filter. Nice. So the dirty filter with drive on. 
gives us some nice crunch. Good. Also, we may want to maybe up the sustain in here and instead use a different envelope, drag it over the level. I'm going to now turn the level down, so that's the minimum, and I'm going to turn this up, so that's the maximum. Now this envelope controls how loud the noise is at its source, because with this envelope we are controlling how loud the sound is at the end of the signal chain. So after our filter, and it would make sense to distort the sound more in the filter when it's louder, and not just turn it down later, because that's weird. Okay, let's lower the sustain here. As you can hear now, we have something that sounds a little bit like an explosion. So we could definitely add some more. What we could also do is use another filter, filter 2, and use two of them in parallel. I'm going to first disable the first one. Enable sample, so that our sampler goes to filters 1 and 2. We can maybe change this to a bandpass. Oh, we could also use this. I would like to change the curvature, but I don't want to affect anything else. So I'm going to go to matrix, which is shorthand for modulation matrix. That's it. That's the thing. And here you can see we have envelope 2, which is this one. And it's being used to control filter 2 cutoff. And there's a few things. First is we have a fantastic remapping function, which we could just use to do this. And now, if you can see, this is way snappier. Nice. But there's also this thing, which does the same thing. Let's copy this and initialize. So you see we have a shorthand for making this kind of bending right, built in right into this uh, matrix with the morphing. Okay, let's go back to our voices. What if we distort that? Okay, the analog filter is quite clean, I would say. Let's try the dirty one. First without distortion or drive. Okay, let's see if we can find something that distorts even more. What about the ladder? <laughs> All right, that's funny. Okay, let's go with diode. I believe that's a model of a Korg filter. Ooh. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so it's either low pass or band pass. This sounds to me like a nice, um, reverb, like echo, um, response of the environment where the explosion happens. I like this. Let's see what happens if we enable this first filter again. Nice. Let's disable the second one. Can you hear the difference? Of course, this doesn't sound like a realistic explosion yet. We could keep working on it and finally 
get there. But it's already way better than what we had before. Also, I have an idea to maybe go to the matrix and see envelope 2, sample level. Can we change this? What if we do 2? Will that accept it? No, no, that is too much. <laughs> so if I make this bipolar, we can... <laughs> okay, I think what we could do, let's make it unipolar, is use another envelope. Make it just shorter. Ah, there we go. So you see, we are adding a little bit of a really nasty click. I think I'd also like to move this thing. Let's see, what if we assign this? Okay, that's way too much. What if we also... I don't know. Change the... Oh, what did I do? I think I did nothing. I would like to assign it here, to this one. Okay, that's it. And now reverse that. Alright, what about this? Okay, we can also use that. Okay, this is very, very sensitive. Even a tiny bit. Is there like a modifier key that I can use to have more precision? Okay, I can just... Oh, if you control click, you can type in. Okay, 0 0.01. All right, control click again. Let's type 0 0.02. We can... Middle click to disable. I think that's an appropriate amount. See how little we get, we, we did. <laughs> okay, I think what we could do to improve that is also add a little bit of a percussive hit. Not entirely unlike a kick drum. So let's enable an oscillator. And now it's going to a filter, which is distorting. So I'm going to go to effects. Sweet, okay. First is we may want to disable note tracking on this oscillator. So that whatever I press, it sounds the same. Uh, we could also an up the oversampling to hopefully get cleaner distortion. I'm gonna keep note tracking for the oscillator though. So. Okay, we need to make this a sine wave. We could use some. Are there any uh, presets? I think they're not. Okay, let's go edit this. Right click, clear, and just add one harmonic. Well, single one. And this clear it as well. These, th these are the phases and these are the amplitudes of harmonics. Okay, we can actually save this as sign. Wow, I'm gonna be the author of sign. Amazing. Great, now we can, I think if we go shift, yes, holding shift, we can um, offset the pitch by entire octaves instead of just half steps or half tones, rather. Hmm. All right. I think what we need is a nice snappy amplitude envelope like this one, but maybe let's take a different one. <laughs> I actually like how that screamed. Yeah, that's not really... Yeah. 
You know what? I've just realized we're distorting the signal. Okay, that was way too loud. Okay, so... We want a very quick and um, large change in the pitch. You know what? Let's disable the sampler. Also, let's disable the phase randomization. We can also change the phase. I'm going to control click and type 90. This means that our waveform is not going to start here. It's going to start here. So we have a nice click. This is almost like an 808. But we don't want that. We want something more. Let's go with this. Just not so much. Okay. Let's shift this down another octave. Oh, sorry, shift. Yes, we can also move this to the level and turn down the base level to zero. Hmm. Let's turn on the sampler. Yeah, so I think this little sine wave gives us a bit more low end. Now let's go to post-processing. Let's go with effects. We can try distortion. It would be nice to maybe use a pre-filter. Change it to a bandpass. This adds some interesting character. Let's try it. Add it just a bit. All right, that's interesting. Let's see what we can do with the reverb. I think we could improve this, <laughs> up the size and reduce the time. This is how this reverb sounds on its own. If we also use this to add snappiness. Okay. We could also add some punch to this uh, kick drum element with some distortion. Like squeeze. Maybe enable it. Oh, there's also a phase. Huh. And we could enable unison in the tune to have this a little bit less. Um, clean or focused. Hmm. 
Okay, we have something going on. I think what we could also do is try and use a compressor. Now, by default, the compressor is in multiband mode and it has three bands. And you can see ratios are expressed, the compression ratios are expressed with these lines. And this is a upwards downwards compressor. So I believe at first it compresses downwards. So these are like the downwards compressors. And then it compresses upwards, which is like it brings the quieter parts um, up. This means you can either uh, limit the high amplitudes or not, or you can limit the low, which will try to lift the quieter signals up to the same loudness. Isn't this even working like an expander? What if we move the reverb above that? Hmm. Okay, maybe if we lower the mix so that there's less reverb because the compressor accentuates the reverb a lot. Okay, I don't like that, it's too long. Alrighty. I think that's kind of usable. Let's see what we can do with the EQ. One thing is we could use a high pass filter to maybe control the lows a little bit because they are quite crazy. And this is also useful if you're trying to like... This sounds a little bit similar to the micro missiles in Doom 2016. So like a, a general rule of sound design is sounds which are higher in pitch are created by smaller objects. Sounds that are lower in pitch are created by larger objects. So if you are making a smaller explosion, for example, it would make sense to use this EQ maybe like that. And you don't have all this crazy bass going on. It, it, it sounds like a, it could be a grenade or, or a small rocket. Maybe even a shotgun. I don't know. Of course, this sounds a little bit synthy, and you may not want that. For like non-realistic graphics um, for a video game, this could work. If you're going for realistic looks, well, this is not going to cut it on its own. Uh, you will need to use s at least some form of recorded explosions. And you can blend this in. And blending recorded explosions with um, synthesized ones gives great results. Because you have all the control of the synthesis. And you have the character of the recorded sounds. It's great to even like go and record some firecrackers. And I actually have a recording of a firecracker that I could bring up and show you how that work works. So let's let me find that recording. So here is a recording of a firecracker. And as you can see, there's a lot of very interesting characterful reverb. It's really difficult to synthesize something like that. But if we combine the two, let's create a note. Also, the pitch of the note. 
changes. There are also different ways we could affect that. Something very useful that I used when designing sounds for tanks firing shells, firing their cannons, is using convolution reverb with something like this cr firecracker. So what we could do is, for example, use this another Vitalium instance and maybe use our awesome sign preset. Drop this. Remove the phase randomness, make this always start with a click. Make it shorter. Can even make it longer. Okay, we can also distort it. Yeah, maybe post. <laughs> Almost hard style. <laughs> oh my goodness. This makes me want to drop it and start making hard style. What about to do this? To do this. Wait, too, too, not enough highs. What the hell? We need more highs. Okay, a little bit noise. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's a good note. Okay, I'm gonna record that actually. Because I, I don't want to search on the keyboard which note is it. Okay, let's go with that. And now we have this. I'm going to add an IR, which is an impulse response reverb. And now we can, actually, if we open the plugin with generic controls. Okay, no. So now we can open a file, load this. Now if we go no dry. You can see this is our this is our um sound. which is multiplied with this um, reverb, recorded reverb. It's good to do some fade out. Okay, and afterwards we can also apply compressor, LSP, multiband compressor. Okay, LSP multiband, compressor stereo, times eight. Sure, I want to favorite this plugin. It's one of the more useful ones, okay. Uh, greetings, you've updated. Sure. That's, actually, this is a fresh Linux, uh, Arch Linux installation. I haven't <laughs> used these plugins yet. Okay, what we need to do is up the ratios. Ratios are here. Let's go maybe to 4 to 1. You can use four bands of this compressor. Yay! You can also change this to... Brown. Yeah, the, the it uh, sidechain boots. This determines the, the the spectrum. Like none is neutral. Pink like boosts lows a little bit. Brown is like more. Or maybe it's the, the other way around. No, it doesn't sound good. I'm just gonna roll lower the 
Where is it? Attack, decibels. Okay, this is the... And where is makeup gain? Okay, such makeup gain is this. together okay there's a little slight delay we need to and now again lower sounds larger objects we can I'm gonna copy this alt 1 to mute it we can T to time stretch Oh, there's a new, wow, there's a new mode. Awesome. Haven't seen that. Resample without preserving pitch. Yes, this is going to just change this playback speed. Now I'm also going to apply this to our, our original firecracker. I don't think this flanger is doing our s doing us any good. There's so many cool things we can do. Like, I don't know, maybe use an LFO on this. It's trigger. This sounds a little bit like a rocket going off because it. Okay, let's change the starting point. I've published some sounds on freesound.org, which are firecracker explosions, and you can cut out their license under Creative Commons Zero, so you can just get them. You don't have to credit me, so that's always appreciated. And you can make your own explosion sounds based off of that. And using impulse response reverb is very nice and, and gives you makes you makes it possible to mix a recorded explosion sound with something else and achieve an interesting result. And also this plugin can also as well stretch. It's time stretch this reverb. So I think we need to change this fade out so because Yeah. Okay, uh now I'm gonna apply some processing on the master bus because this is only x42 dpl yes we need a limiter as you can see i have no favorites in this on the system because this is very fresh okay we are we've been clipping the signal very strongly let's see do i have chow tape oh i don't uh, okay wolf shaper okay wolf shaper Wolf Shaper, favorite as well. Wolf Shaper is a distortion plugin which has an oversampling mode. <laughs> I can enable auto return. The good thing is we can. quite cleanly saturate our signal because it features this oversampling. Without the limiter and with the limiter. Now it's clear that we are with our signal is way too loud and we are losing a lot of transient in 
this process. I'm going to enable the sample peak, true sample uh, limiting, so that we don't go above the limit. Okay, and I think that's that could be it. Of course, if we had multiple sounds, and usually when you're doing sound effects, you don't you don't do one session per sound effect. You're gonna have a dozen or 50 or 200 sound effects in one session, depending on what your system can handle and how you want to organize your work. But I've made different videos where I show how to manage that, so I'm not gonna talk about this. This was a video about making explosion sounds. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you found this video interesting, inspiring, educational. If you have any questions about this topic or anything else regarding audio production with free and open source software and Linux, or if you have suggestions for what I could do in a future video, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'd also like to thank everyone who is supporting my work financially. Thanks to these people, I can keep making videos. If you, dear viewer, would like to join them, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa, which is a free and open source alternative to Patreon. And there you can support me with a monthly donation. Even one dollar means a lot to me. All right, um, I think that went pretty, pretty okay. Uh, yeah, without, without using any recorded audio, it's it's not really possible to make explosions that sound realistic. Uh, if you keep, if you stay you on synthesized sound, it's always going to be sounding stylized. And for some games or animations, this can be what you maybe what you need. Uh, if you need something more realistic, then you're gotta get some recorded explosions, even small ones. You can always stretch them out, slow them down, and make them sound bigger. Or just grab a pack of uh, firecrackers and have at it, just to say. Oh, and also, if you do that, consider uploading them to freesound.org under a Creative Commons Zero license, so we can all use that as well. Alright. Now go and make some explosion sounds.